Good morning. Are you an early riser? Love getting up in the morning? Want to be to school before everybody else? Love working out? Well, zero hour weightlifting is the class for you. We start our class at 7, 10 a.m. every day. We hit all major muscle groups with a focus on strength and power. Bench press, squats, deadlift clean, biceps and triceps. Lace up those shoes, get in some runs. Grab your favorite jump rope. And elevate that heart rate. If you want to be the best, you have to train better than the rest. If you're not an early riser, maybe performance training would be better. In performance training, we focus on the same muscle groups at zero hour. We work squats, bench, deadlift, and hand clean, as well as our arms with bicep curls and our triceps. We work on our balance with single leg RDLs and split squats. Hit our core and work on our balance, such as this yoga ball stability. Work on our agility, agility ladders, and test our vertical to measure our explosive power. If performance training and zero hour are not right for you, maybe general fitness. We take a holistic approach and work on the whole body. We do great dynamic warm ups, working on our mobility of every movement pattern. And we hit the weight room once a week. Where we get shredded. We also spend time working on team sports at a socially distant spacing. In lifetime fitness, we also spend time in the weight room once a week, but our focus is more on mobility, flexibility, and staying uh, injury free and learning individual sports skills that we could use way beyond high school up into our upper 80s, 90s like pickleball, golf, tennis, badminton, and it's just a great fun time. Hello, I'm Mr. Schneider at Goldendale High School and I teach all of the music here. Uh, we have a zero hour jazz band where we work on all kinds of different jazz music including stuff for drum set and guitars as well as traditional band instruments. I also teach concert band which is exactly what you'd expect, band just like it is at the middle school only better. We play for uh, basketball games, football games, we do competitions, it's awesome. And then we also have choir which is anybody is welcome to join, anybody can come in and check it out and we sing a variety of pop classical, jazz, barbershop, whatever we're interested in, we'll do. was quite a shout out from uh, my old friend Johnny looking for art students that want to take art classes here at GHS. Hi my name is Mr. Gray and I am the visual art teacher here at Golden Dale High School. I would like to invite you to think about taking an art class here and either for fun or a requirement that you need to fulfill. 
We'll talk about different art classes here in just a minute, but right now I'd like you to watch this video on uh, why art is important. Thank you. There's a deep desire in us to make pictures. I mean, they've been drawing for 30,000 years. The teaching of drawing is teaching people to look. That's what it's doing. It was really when I was at art school that I started to see the relationship between history, philosophy, politics and art. Prior to that, I, I thought that art was just making pretty pictures. Actually, art is connected to, you know, life. You can't teach art in the same way you can teach French. French exists whether, whether you do it or not. But when you're doing art, the center of doing art is in yourself. Most of the literate subjects do not ask that of them. So this develops an entirely different realm of skill. Creativity is critical thinking. And without it, how are you gonna really open up and ask harder questions? And art opens all of those kind of passages and possibilities to think beyond what we already know. In a child's education, that doors need to be open to other universes, other modes of thinking. And art is a non-pre-described, dangerous world full of possibility. And I think that's a vital space for children to have in their formative years of their education. From a top-down level, you don't have innovation if you don't have arts. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if you're going to study history or geography or science, you still need to be creative. Because the people who are the outliers in those fields are the most creative people. To have art in schools be eroded, which is happening at the moment, is disastrous for Britain, I think, because our best industry is the creative industry. Art and cultural production is at the very centre of what makes a society what it is. And for an entire new generation not to know what is the cultural and visual history of ourselves is kind of denying our own identity. Art is a reflection of the society that we are, the kind of mirror that art holds up, the way that art helps define the identity of a nation, that you can trace that back historically. It's deeply embedded in humanity. What art education does to people who are not going to be artists is giving them the opportunity to build certain aspect of themselves that otherwise will be either ignored, undeveloped, or repressed. It's all about kids finding out who they are, and they're all different. That you can be whatever you want to be is something that art certainly taught me. It can access a part of your brain, body, spirit, mind, that nothing else can. Nothing is more stimulating, exciting, consoling than looking at a brilliant painting. Art in schools shouldn't be sidelined. I think it should be right there, right up in the front, because I think art teaches you to deal with the world around you. It's the oxygen that actually makes all the other subjects breathe. There's a great quote by John Ruskin. Art shows us what it is to be human. And really, that's, that's why art should be on the curriculum.
Understanding the elements of art is one of the first steps in grasping the concept of art. By exploring each element with different projects that focus on the element, a greater comprehension for art will be achieved. In this class, you will develop an understanding of why rather than how. Art is a developed skill. Sure, some individuals are more gifted in art, but there are also people that are gifted in math, writing, and science, and other areas. That still doesn't mean you can't learn and get better with a focused effort. This class will also cover art critique. By learning the steps, it will help you develop a process of walking into a gallery or museum and be able to talk intelligently about art. Art 1 is the prerequisite for all the other art classes. Graphic Arts is a class that works with two web-based programs, Canva and Photopea. Canva is a graphic design platform that allows you to easily create invitations, business cards, flyers, lesson plans, Zoom backgrounds, and more using professionally designed templates. With this program, assignments can be centered around the developing sound compositional skills. Photopea is an advanced image editor which can work with both Rasta and vector graphics. You can use it for simple tasks such as resizing images as well as complex tasks such as designing web pages, creating illustrations, processing photographs, and more. With this program you learn to use the tools of the image editor with fun assignments that will help you develop a greater understanding how the program works. It is very similar to Photoshop Elements. If you like creating something from a lump of clay with your own two hands, then ceramics class is where you need to be. Working with your hands, even if they get a little dirty, is a lot of fun. You will be exposed to four different forms of construction while developing your craftsmanship skills. Making several clay projects that you will be proud of is a high priority in this class. The forms of hand building construction you will be using are pinch, coil, slab, or a combination of these. Will work will be introduced and you will be encouraged to give it a try. L a little paperwork, but a lot of hands-on fun. Ceramics class has become one of Goldendale High School's favorite classes for students to take. After learning many of the foundations in Art 1, it's time to get to work creating. Art 2 Studio is designed to introduce you to several different art media. For each medium, a guided project is introduced to ensure success for each student. After the guided project is completed, it will be your chance to take that medium and develop a piece of work of your choosing. We start out with a quick but intense study of graphite. The skill sets you will develop are perception skills, creating the illusion of depth through value, and developing a strong sense of proportion. We study human facial features and you will be surprised how quickly you learn the importance of each mini lesson you complete. It will take you one step closer to that final project. After graphite, we continue to draw with pen and ink. You will learn several pen strokes and have a guided project that will help you use what you have learned. Then you will be ready to do a pen and ink project of your choice. Scratchboard is next, then printmaking, and finally watercolor painting. I think you get the idea of how this class is taught. Again, you will be introduced to the medium through mini lessons and a guided project. Once completed, you will be ready to take on a project of your own. If you have taken Art 1, then you will be ready to start making art in Art 2 Studio.
practices as well. And I teach Spanish one and Spanish two at the high school. And I'm going to start my presentation today with a little video on reasons why you might want to learn Spanish. Reasons to learn Spanish. Spanish is a global language. Spanish is not only an international language, but it is also the second most widely spoken language in the world by native speakers. Approximately 500 million people speak Spanish around the world. Spanish is one of the most widely dispersed languages. Spanish is spoken in 44 countries with at least 3 million native speakers in each. Spanish is an official language in 21 countries. Spanish is the third most widely used language in the internet. Discover a whole new world traveling the Spanish-speaking world. Spanish spoken in one of the world's most popular destinations, such as Mexico, Spain, and the United States. Spanish is an official language of the United Nations and the European Union. Spanish is fun. Spanish culture is on the rise. Enjoy Spanish music, dance, cinema, art, and literature. Have fun learning Spanish. Listen to Spanish Latin music. Enjoy learning Spanish. Learn some of the moves. Salsa, Zumba, Merengue, Tango, Reggaeton, Flamenco. Tango. Spanish is very easy to learn. Spanish and English are both European languages. They share almost identical alphabet. 30 to 40% of all words in English have a related word in Spanish. Spanish is phonetical. Each letter has a single corresponding sound. Spanish job opportunities. You can find jobs working for international airlines, hotels and tourism, education and interpreting, the health industry, government, and so many more. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stop the presentation there. I do want to go over a couple of tips on the next slide I have for you if you do choose to take Spanish. So I would choose to take Spanish 1 as a sophomore and Spanish 2 as a junior. And the reason I say that is because if you take the two years, you, want, you need to take the two years back to back. And so if you take it sophomore junior year, or you could take it junior senior year, but if you take it the sophomore junior year, then you're sure that you are done with it by your senior year. And if things come up your senior year where you can't fit in Spanish into your schedule or whatever the case may be, you've already met that requirement, okay? So two years of a second language is required if you're planning on attending a four-year college or university. But I also wanna emphasize that you may take Spanish even if you're not planning on going to college. If you think it might be interesting or fun or useful, uh, you're welcome, more than welcome to sign up for the class and try it, take a year. Um, or take two years, depending on, you know, how you feel about it. And if you have any questions, I encourage you to stop by and see me, and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. Thanks. Hello. So, my name is Mr. Walters, for those of you who may or may not know. Um, I am one of the three math teachers here at JHS, along with Mrs. Young and Mrs. Piper. 
Um, Mrs. Gallagher here also teaches a math CTE course called Financial Algebra, um, which is a junior level class. So what I'll be talking about is a, all the classes that are offered at GHS and all the math classes that are offered at GHS um, and the required courses and then some required courses for going to Fordham University and some that may be required or one, which is bridge to college math that may be required for you to take just to meet the graduation requirements. So to start off with, as an eighth grader or ninth grader, you take algebra one. And then the year after that, you take geometry. Those are required by the state. You don't have an option. Now, you're required at GHS to have three math credits to graduate. So algebra one and geometry count as two of those. So that leaves you with needing just one more to meet your graduation need, your graduation requirement. And those two courses could be either financial algebra with Mrs. Gallagher or algebra two um, in the math department. Now, if you're somebody who wants to keep the option open of going to a four-year university, taking Algebra II is a requirement for that. Having taken and passed Algebra II is a requirement to go on to a four-year university. Um, and our suggestion would be to take that just so that you're not closing any doors for yourself. It's not a requirement though. Algebra II, you do not have to take. You can go take Financial Algebra and graduate with the rest of your senior class when the time comes. Um, nothing also, nothing wrong with taking financial algebra and going to a community college, taking algebra two at, a, at community college level and then going to a four-year university. But if you want to start off with going to a four-year university, you're going to need to take algebra two at high school. Um, on that note also for a four-year university, some require if not all, um, require that you take a math class your senior year. So that means if you take Algebra 1 your freshman year, Geometry your sophomore year, Algebra 2 your junior year, and you want to go to a foreign university, that means you have to take either pre-calculus um, your senior year or Financial Algebra your senior year. classes. First we got digital communications where we work in Microsoft Office where you try to get your certificate and once you got your certificate you can earn up to six college credits at YVC. You can take this class as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior but right now it is required for freshmen. It's a really good class to work on your word skills and try to get your certificate. Financial Algebra is a junior and senior class. 
can be used as a third or fourth year of math and used toward the CTE pathway for graduation. You can earn up to five college credits at YBC if you get uh, these are better for both semesters. You're able to learn real life skills such as learning how to balance a checkbook. You can also learn how to do your taxes. You will also learn how to do, uh, manage your payroll, retirement, and you can also learn how to play the stock market. Join Join financial financial Next, we're going to be talking about business English. Um, in business English, we cover a lot of things such as nav binder materials and requirements, like the cover letter, resume, and it teaches you really good skills for later in life if you're willing to go in like the business major and whatnot. We have cool projects about different things and it's a really good class to take. So now I'm going to talk about intro to business. In this class, you get to learn about ethics, entrepreneurship, and economy. Uh, you also get to do many different fun projects as such as making poster boards or at the end you get to make a food truck and with this this is one part of the project and you can see you can put your own little label on there too and honestly this class is just fun and you should take it and it gives you life skills. Next we're going to be talking about FBLA. What does that stand for? Future Business Leaders of America. And in this club you get to participate in so many fun events you can compete in and make new friends and go on some fun trips such as hockey games blazers games and other fun activities yeah. this club can teach you about business and can help help you get skills to go into college so join fbla join fbla Greetings, this is Miss Furch. I'm here to talk to you about English 3 and what kind of course credit it can offer you for your English language arts. All right, so English 3 is usually designed for uh, English for 11th and 12th grade students, usually in, taken in the third or fourth year of your high school career. It is designed for individuals who are planning on going to a two-year or a four-year uh, college or that taking that pathway. So this is the natural step to take after you've taken the prerequisites of English 1 and English 2. Uh, there are other options available, but English 3 is more of the, um, the college pathway um, and the academic pathway uh, to take. So how is English 3 structured? Well, we focus on American literature. And while we read American literature, we are practicing the absolute basics, which is reading, writing, and language, which are the three things that we focus most on uh, in English 1 and 2. However, in this class, we take it to the next level. So we're, while we're reading, we are reading upper level texts, upper level, upper level documents, and we are, while we're reading, we're focusing on skills uh, such as comprehension, but also critical thinking and reasoning. While we write, we're not just writing, but we are also focusing and honing our skills on organization, researching, argument, uh, focusing on argumentation, and analyzing our, our writing and other pieces of writing. While we are also using and practicing our skills that we've learned in English 1 and English 2 with context, vocabulary, and grammar, we are pushing the envelope by also focusing on style, interpretation, and inference in the various language uh, pieces uh, in the texts that we come up with or come up to. So how is this also structured. Well, this is the first class that we follow a chronological timetable. So this is different than English 1 and English 2, which focus on various units and various dramas in, in big units and big chunks. Instead, we have a mix of the genres. So we will focus on short story, drama, poetry, mythology, fiction, and nonfiction, just like the past couple of courses, English 1 and English 2, but instead we get a mix. So if we look at what we're reading uh, throughout the year, and this is, this is what the typical uh, schedule, reading schedule looks like, we start out the year 
looking at mythology, uh, early American literature, Native American mythology, documents, narratives, and short stories. And then our first book that we look at is actually a drama or a play by Arthur Miller, it's The Crucible. And then we go into a novel, which is The Scarlet Letter. And then public documents, we read the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution of the United States. And then we go back to a novel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Um, and then we move into quite a bit of poetry and the sea wolf, more poetry. Then when we get into the modern era, we'd speak of and we discuss Ernest Hemingway and his writing style with the Farewell to Arms. We talk about the great Gatsby and of course, we all love that when we're done with it um, because it's a great story. And then we look into the Harlem Renaissance, the poetry of that time period, which is absolutely amazing with Hurston McKay, Hughes and Colin, etc. And then after that, we move into a couple of plays written by Thornton Wilder and Tennessee Williams. And we tend to read them and act them out. And everybody, of course, enjoys that. Um, that little activity. So four credits of English are required for graduation. Other courses that can be used for these credits are Business English Young Adult Lit, Lit to Film English 3. And all of these are designed to um, be in order. English 4 and college in the in the high school English are generally for seniors. So any of these electives uh, can be used to fill your four credits of English uh, for your requirements. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, ask your nearest English teacher today for more details. And I hope that you consider English 3 as one of your options. This is Ms. Furch signing off. So it's hard for me to believe, but I hear some of you don't like to read. Even if you don't like to read, I think you would enjoy the young adult literature class. We read a variety of books. Obviously, we're going the whole focus is on reading, but all the books do come on an audiobook also, and I don't mind if you listen to the audiobook. In fact, we usually listen to some of the book on an audiobook even in class. So all different characters, all different genres. Um, there's quizzes, there's projects, there's questions to answer, lots of discussion. Uh, I think you would enjoy the class. This class is mostly, if not all, for juniors and seniors. Um, it also then leads into the film analysis class. So you don't have to take both, but since you do need four years of English, that's an opportunity. So the film analysis class, we're going to be watching movies and then talking about symbolism, plot, character, setting, themes, same kinds of things we do in English class. That class focuses more on writing then to go along with the movies. We're going to talk about different jobs a person could do within the movie industry. And we'll talk about script writing. Um, another fun class that, that I think you'd find really interesting. Both of them do require work, so don't assume they're going to be easy. But they may be easier than some of your other options. So I, I hope you sign up. Okay, so this class is opinion oriented and you read a lot. I'm not a big reader and I still like the class. It's pretty easy. But don't join it because it's easy. Do it because you like to read. You're doing it. Tiana, why do you like this class? Because um, there's a variety of books and it's a lot about reading and interpreting what you read. <laughs> why do you like this class? Uh, because all of the books that we read were very interesting and they're all different in their own ways. And World History is an elective history class you might enjoy taking. This class is, uh, has projects we study from the book. There's an online book available. Uh, we started with the Renaissance this year and we got to World War II. It's one semester, so you could take Geography for the second semester or Washington State History or another class of your choice. I think it's a class that covers a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, something that you would enjoy and kind of gives you an overview of how the world became what it is today. Hey, I'm here at Machu Picchu to try to talk you into taking geography class. I think you'd really enjoy it. The book we use focuses on the people, the environment, the history of a place. We do projects. We 
uh, talk about travel. I love to travel, so we go into a lot of detail about places we might want to go and what we might see when we got there. So if you need another history class, I think you'd enjoy this, and I'd love to see you. So here I am to tell you about Washington State history while my cat crawls around in the background and my dog plays with her squeaky toy. So <laughs> Washington State history is a required class, but I think it's really fun. We learn about the history of Washington State, we learn about the government, we learn about places to go visit. Um, there's all kinds of neat things about how Washington became what it is today. We do projects, there is a textbook, so we do um, assignments that come from the book, and then things that help you hopefully want to explore more about the state that we live in. So I hope you enjoy the class and I look forward to seeing you. Hi, my name is Mr. Bosha. I'm here to talk to you today about a class I'll be teaching next year called United States History. Um, this is an 11th grade class and it is a graduation requirement um, for to graduate from Golden Hill High School. Now, this history class will start around the 1880s, 1890s and will move towards the present. So we'll cover issues like immigration and urbanization, uh, the 1920s, uh, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, um, social movements like the Civil Rights Movement, uh, the um, counterculture movement in the 1960s, uh, the populist movement, the progressive movement, um, and all these things and how they impacted U.S. history. We'll look at important presidents and historical figures and how they impacted the world. We'll look at the wars that were fought during this time period and their role in changing and impacting America. Uh, we'll look at the U.S. becoming a, a person involved, country involved in world affairs. Uh, we'll look at how science and technology changed the world and changed the United States history and impacted that. We'll look at the civil rights movement and civil responsibilities. So we're basically looking at the story of us and how we got here. So the important thing to understand is that Things that are happening today have possibly their roots in the past. Um, George Santayana, who is a philosopher, uh, was one of my favorite quotes is, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So our purpose of you taking this class and learning about this is that you guys learn from our past mistakes. Now, uh, during the course of this class, we'll do a bunch of different things. We'll do some, we'll do reading, obviously. Uh, we'll watch some videos that help in, inform and enhance information that are going on. Uh, we'll do some, possibly some simulation activities. Uh, maybe we'll do some role playing. We'll have debates on particular issues and so on and so forth. Um, so again, it can be a really fun thing. And hopefully you guys will have as much fun teaching, taking the class as I do and teaching it. Also, second semester. We will have to be doing something called the classroom based assessment, which is a formal paper that you'll be writing in second semester of U.S. history. Now, the topics vary every year from year to year what's going on, but basically you're writing an argument of paper. You're doing research and acting as a historian and you're researching a topic and you're thinking about it and then you're deciding, OK, I think these are what's caused this to happen and here's my reasons why. So it's basically you're just writing argument as a paper. You know, and it's, it could not take that. We'll take some time in class. Usually I do this after uh, um, spring break. So we use those time after spring break to work on the paper. Okay. Next, chemistry. Chemistry is a full year course recommended for juniors and seniors. This is a course that focuses on exploring matter its structures, its composition, changes, reactions, and laws that govern matter. This is an algebra-based science class. One year of this type of science is required for four-year colleges, so keep that in mind. To be successful in this course, you must have passed Algebra 2 or higher. This is a very math-based class. Be curious, be open-minded, and again, hopefully, have a basic understanding of the scientific method. Want to learn how and why things change and react in the world and universe? Then this is the course for you. There's also anatomy and physiology. This is a full year course recommended for juniors and seniors. This course focuses on exploring the human body, its structures, physiology, functions, and changes. To be successful in this course, be curious, be open minded, and be interested in yourself. If you're interested in a health-related career after high school, this is the course for you. Finally, we have physics. This is a full year course recommended for juniors and seniors. This is an applied physics course that focuses on exploring the laws that govern life and the universe, mechanical laws, electrical laws, and Newtonian laws. This is an algebra-based science class. 
Again, one year of this type of science is required for four-year colleges. To be successful in this course, you must have passed Algebra 2 or higher. This is a very math-based science. Be curious, be open-minded, and have a basic understanding of the scientific method. For those of you that love math but are interested in science careers, say engineering, this is the course for you. You still don't know which course is right for you? Talk to a science teacher. We love questions. Let's go on a science adventure together. Hi, my name is Mrs. Bear, and I wanted to talk with you students about the course offerings for family consumer science for next year. The first class is foods. In this class, students learn how to prepare food dishes using a variety of tools, cooking techniques, and different food groups. It's a one semester course, it's a CT or an elective credit, and students will earn their Washington State Food Handlers Certificate and take the Precision Exam Foods and Nutrition 340. This, student, this class is available for grades nine through 12. There are no prerequisites. We um, actually learn to grow our own food. We have a small raised bed outside the door and we graze our own lettuce. Students typically work in teams of three to five and they will complete approximately 20 labs. Examples of these of labs include the following, jam, stir fry, rolls, burgers, chocolate, cream puffs, mac and cheese. Also, kids learn how to use knives safely. And um, here's another skill, learning how to make a pie crust. 
is also learn about superfoods and share recipes and food information with another partner class. Here's an example of a group talking about the benefits of blueberries. The final in this course is an Iron Chef competition. In this co um, competition, students um, are given a, a task, a challenge, and then they work together to come up with a food product to best re reflect that challenge. And their product is judged by three individuals that are local food professionals. This is the pictures of, from two years ago, plus our best cake lab. We do a lot about how food impacts your body and the science of food. So there's a little bit of applied biology and chemistry as well. A great course if you want to learn how to cook for yourself and cook well. The second course is parenting, which is the study of human growth and development from birth through age 18. We talk about how to help a child grow and thrive. We observe children and their behaviors, and students also complete a real care simulation. Parenting is a one semester course as well, as a CTE or an elective or a social studies elective credit. In addition, students can earn three college credits from Yakima Valley, earn 30 hours of child care basics training, and also, they also take the precision exam, Child Development 320. This course is available from grades nine through 12, and there are no prerequisites. Um, the Child Care Basic Certificate then allows students to work in a daycare or as a preschool assistant after they've finished high school. The Real Care Baby Simulation is taking care of a baby for 24 hours to get the experience of what it's like to take care of somebody besides just yourself. Is an example of um, where we will observe and watch children in action to gain a better understanding of where they are developmentally. We also consider and talk about conception, prenatal growth, and childbirth because these have an impact perhaps on the future health of the child and the family. We do a lot about positive parenting and healthy families. Excellent course also if you're thinking about going into education. Applied psychology talks about the history and mission of psychology. We um, get a better understanding of scientific process within psychology. We study the five meta theories. We talk about and research mental health disorders and have a simulation on relationships. Most students that go to a two year, four year college have to take five to 10 humanities credits. The applied psychology class at Golden High School gives students an introduction about that topic area and what students might be reviewing and, and studying in college. This course is available for great students grades 10 through 12. There are no prerequisites. Psychology is a science and you will design your own experiment. Psychology also helps us interpret, understand how our brain takes in information and it's not just with your eyes. Students will research a mental illness, create this presentation and share this with their peers. And we do a a uh, experience with relationships, love relationships, and um, partner that with a relationality game. The five meta theories are behavioral, biological, cognitive, psychoanalytical, and humanistic. The fourth and final course is worksite learning. And in this course, a student will complete a supervised work internship in an occupation field of their interest. They spend two periods at the worksite, four days a week, four days a week, and then attend a weekly seminar on campus each Wednesday. Students take the Precision 21st Century Success Skills, and they get some firsthand exposure and experience to work within a career. This is for students uh, 11 through 12. They will need to have transportation, and this requires an application that has to be approved by myself, the instructor, and by the work site. What's required is a student must complete 160 hours of properly documented work hours at the work site. They must complete a work site learning agreement packet signed by parents themselves, the work site and myself. They must attend the weekly seminars on campus, which are an extension of the 21st century skills. And they must follow the agreement and um, expectations lined out. If there is ever a situation, then this, there is potential for a student to be dropped from this site. Never has that happened, but it's a different expectation than a high school class. These are the courses for um, the following school year. And like all CTE courses, there is the aspect of leadership and students will 
participate in a variety of leadership acti activities within the class and off the campus to earn 50 points for each semester. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come and see me.